um, submission is the Kashmir High School Student Sustainability Council. Dr. Lee Cooper and I believe some students. No, just the students. Oh, good. I didn't mean just the students. I mean, great, yay, the students. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be photographed by Vicky Button. You'll be on Facebook anytime soon. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> we'll take the photo anyway. Save it for later. today from the um, Kashmir High School Sustainability Council. I'm Beth, this is Anzac and Nola. Um, um, firstly, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you in person today. Our submission is that the council includes energy saving programs for city council buildings in the long-term plan. Firstly, we'll talk about what energy saving programs we've had at Kashmir and then talk about how similar actions could be taken within the council to make our city a more sustainable place. Two years ago, we installed an energy monitoring system at Kashmir High School so that we could track electricity usage across individual classroom blocks within our school. This data was available online to students and teachers and was also displayed on LCD screens around the school as a friendly reminder to switch off lights and heat pumps when they were not actually uh, needed. Uh, we also launched a fun switched off publicity campaign to reinforce our message in a positive way. In terms of the savings this has created, in the first year, we reduced our energy consumption by 10%, and this was with very little capital expenditure, purely by encouraging people to switch off when not using. This is backed up by research, which shows that 10% savings can easily be generated simply by encouraging behavioural change around electricity. In the second year, we saved an additional 25%, by replacing our old fluorescent lights around the school with energy efficient LED lights. And so over these two years, we saved $60,000. And this is bearing in mind which the four years prior to our campaign, our electricity bill had doubled. Um, recently, our energy saving efforts at Kashmir High School received global recognition at the Zayed Future Energy Prize Awards in Abu Dhabi. We're one of um, three finalists out of 1,100 entries, and uh, members from our Sustainability Council attended the awards ceremony and Sustainability Week in Abu Dhabi. Um, here he realised quite how seriously countries like the UAE are taking sustainability and um, energy saving. If we want New Zealand to keep our clean, green and 100% pure image, we really need to start doing even more for the environment, and we believe Christchurch is the perfect place to start. We think that some of the energy saving ideas we've implemented at Kashmir High School could also be used in city council buildings and our submission to this council is that they be considered for the long term plan. Firstly, we recommend the council runs a similar switch it off campaign across city council buildings. This would have minimal cost and research suggests it could uh, save up to 10% of the council's electricity bills. Indeed, we encourage the council to be bold and set an actual target of 10% uh, electricity reduction in uh, over the next uh, two years. The key to success we found is keeping the campaign positive, installing smart meters so that day-to-day -day savings can be tracked in each building and making this data publicly available online and via LCD screens. We'd like to submit that the council invests in sustainable energy over the next 10 years. This is certainly economically viable for new council buildings and rebuilds, but also existing buildings Replacing existing lighting or heating solutions with LED lights or solar would require some capital investment. But these alternative solutions have a payback time of around five years. So, over, so it would offer net long-term savings over the 10-year long-term plan. We'd also like to submit that the sustainable energy strategy for Christchurch, which expires in 2018, is reviewed, revitalised and cemented in the 2025 long-term plan. Christchurch has changed dramatically post-earthquake, creating lots of new challenges, but also opportunities. 
we have the chance to include sustainable design in buildings and sustainable practice beyond 2018 for the next 10 years. As the Youth of Christchurch, we are passionate about building a sustainable legacy for our city following the earthquakes, and we want to enhance our image as the clean, green garden city. Thank you very much for your time today, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have regarding our submission or our energy-saving programs at Kashmir. I just, I thought that um, Vicky might like to start off with um, some discussion around district energy schemes, because... Uh, no? You want to start with something else? All right. But I'd like you to mention it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I thank you for coming along. It's yeah. great to see you. Um, but what I wanted to ask is, if you were going to go beyond this, what else would you want to do? Well, at our school, we'd like to go further into solar energy and make our school more self-sufficient. So that's more of our long-term plan at our school. And yeah. We think that um, yeah, like the new rebuilds for council buildings could... Um, have like solar panels and alternate um, energy, like ways of producing energy rather than just using like mains power. Yep. Uh, Phil? I just wondered, like we, um, the, the Mayor referred to our district energy scheme and that's basically where you've got heat, heat exchange with bores that go down to the aquifer and there's a 25% saving for, for potentially for council and, and other um, large, area, large um, buildings in the city. Like the Christchurch Hospital are also going to be linked to that. So here's my question really. I just wonder if there might be potential for that kind of um, sustainable system for your school, and especially because <coughs> there is a, a, la a large um, rest home complex mm. nearby your school. Had you thought about that? Sorry, I didn't want to put you on the spot. It's just uh, <laughs> so something that we're doing, and perhaps you'd, you'd be very welcome to, to you know, have some general information about, about our scheme, that's all. That would, be, that would be really cool. We hadn't thought about it before, but now that you yeah. say it. But we're always open to uh, more ideas on uh, how we can save energy and also uh, produce uh, energy in a renewable uh, way in our school. And what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what we think is the best way of making it accessible to people is the way we've found of monitoring it. And so having LCD screens around our school makes everyone, the students, teachers, can see day to day how things are changing hourly in different parts of the school so we can see where it's coming from. It, that's a big part of your submission, and that's what I took out of it was that by being, um, you know, sort of proactive and positive, uh, but also feeding back the savings so, so that, that you could see on a daily basis what you get. I mean, you could tell us how much money you'd saved. Um, now that must be pretty exciting, and I, I presume how do you reinvest that money? You know, the savings because I presume that the school has benefited from that. Do, um, do you get to reinvest that in in, in other? Pro projects? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the lighting. Yeah, currently the savings we made is going towards the loan we had for the um, LED lighting. Right. An and, interest free loan. And yeah, we had yeah. an interest free loan for that. And then in the future, we're hoping to reinvest that in like um, alternate energy like production, like solar panels, or we could look into like alternate options. Right. Okay. Glenn and then um, Yanni. Thank you for this. Very good. Um, I'd like to ask you the same question I asked of the person who uh, offered to put uh, solar uh, on all our council housing units. Have you looked at some models to make the, the kind of um, buyback of that uh, energy in the future more economically viable? Because at the moment it's a hard model to crack so people can put power in the grid but actually getting it back is economically quite challenging. Have you looked at some models there? Uh, not currently, uh, really. Um, at the moment, as part of the Zaid Future Energy Prize, we're looking at um, getting funding uh, from that as part of the prize to install the solar panels in our school. Um, and so that way we wouldn't have to uh, pay any of that off as it's all um, um, prize money from that. And so we've been talking with our um, electricity provider and then I think we're in discussions about how we're going to, how it's working that the money we save What's it really going to, like, yeah. what's happening to it? How the savings can come back to the energy production instead of just going into, I know, something else. Great brain, so if you could come up with some models, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Yanni? Yeah, that would be good. That's what we're hoping. Based here in Christchurch. Okay. Whereas with the LED lights, we've got a load, no, so not. it takes five years to pay off. 
you buy yeah. it back at 10% less than the retail cost. Yanni. Yep. Um, I just thank you for coming in. It's, it's really wonderful to hear um, your views on, on sustainability. Um, as you may be aware, some commentators have said this is one of the most unsustainable recoveries from a natural disaster. Um, and I just wondered, you've talked a lot about sharing information as being the kind of way in which you can help people into behaviour 31 change. seconds, Yanni. Get so the I just wondered if you thought it would be good about the idea of having some sort of sustainability clock or screen in the central city, that when people come in, they can actually see the collective impact of all the different sustainable initiatives happening in the city to recover. That would be like the optimum thing because yeah, yeah. it's all about really awareness of what's happening around because students around our school, before our campaign, they knew nothing really and they just, just kept the lights on, didn't turn off computers and stuff. And so most of the change we make is through telling people about it and encouraging people. And about behavioural change rather than physical. Excellent. That's a really good, powerful note to end on. So thank you very much for your um, time and energy. And um, thank you very much for making the, the submission.